Hey there, my name is Provis, and welcome to Farthest Frontier. This is a new indie colony simulator that just went into early access on August 9th, which happened to be my birthday, so I was able to pick up a game guilt-free. <laughs> it's awesome. Anyway, so this is developed by Crate Entertainment, the same company that put together an indie action RPG called Grim Dawn, which I've heard very good things about. And so far, after playing around with this game for a couple of hours, this is looking pretty promising to me so far. It's got a bit of a ways to go, and the tutorial is pretty much non-existent, so that's why I'm here, to give you guys a taste of how this game works and some idea of how to get started. But I think this game actually has some serious potential, and I'm looking forward to giving it a go for you today. Let's go ahead and jump directly into a new settlement, and we'll see how well we fare. There's three different uh, difficulty levels, so you can kind of get a sense of exactly what they're going to offer you, more resources and less hostility, or the exact opposite. We'll go for Trailblazer. I don't want things to be too easy, but I also don't want them to be too hard either. And I'm going to name this one one Gimliesburg because I'm feeling like it. All right, let's get started. Now, there is a story to this game. I'll just give you the teal deer version. Basically, in the country we live in, there's a lot of economic hardships and violent raiders attacking. The nobles kind of suck and aren't protecting us, and their taxes are just completely draining us dry. So some of us have decided to pack up and figure out how to set up a new home far away. And here we are in that far away frontier land. Okay, so there are a few things that we need to do to start ourselves off. We are looking to place down a town hall. There's a handful of things I would like to have. I actually don't see a lot of what I'm looking for. We want to find some good sources of food. We would love to find a good clean source of water. Not because people need to drink it per se, but because you can get a lot of food coming out of fish, and that could be kind of nice for us. We'd also love to see plenty of trees and other resources around. I'm kind of thinking down off in this general area is not horrible. There's clay nearby, plenty of food, a lot of trees. We set up close to some water. This could kind of work out all right for me. So I think we're going to set ourselves up right in this general area, like so, ba-boom. This is where we're going to be placing down our town center. All right. So now our villagers are going to kind of meander the way on over there because that's going to be our new starting location. There's all the people. They are going to start chopping down some trees and getting this zone set up for us. All right. Now, you might be familiar with a lot of these types of colony simulators. Banished, of course, comes to mind. And a lot of the same principles are still going to apply. We need to get some housing taken care of. We need to get food taken care of and make sure we are gathering up a good amount of natural resources, especially in the form of logs and stone for some early construction. After that, we're going to want to start turning that into some firewood, eventually some planks. We'll want to gather up some clay and make bricks, etc. There's plenty that we are going to need to do, but housing is going to be one of the most important things. So, let's go ahead and start thinking that through. Now, again, there's basically no tutorial in this game at all, so uh, it can be a little bit, you know, off-putting. You have to figure out how you're going to be playing this game. For the most part, down over here in the bottom right is what you're going to be looking for. The building menu is going to be your starting location. We want to get these houses. But we can't do anything about that until we have first chopped down all the resources we need to get our town center up and running. So let's go ahead and increase the speed of the game up to, I think, three times speed is the best you can get. I'm hoping they're going to increase it even further at some point. But of course, that depends heavily on the optimization of the game. So we're getting this area cleared out. It's still taking a while, though, unfortunately. It's still taking a little while. Now, there are professions in this game, very similar to something like Banished. By default, we're going to have four builders. You're supposed to be able to increase this. I've heard mixed results, and my own experience has been kind of uh, inconclusive as to whether or not it actually works assigning multiple builders or if four is kind of the maximum you've got. For now, we'll just kind of stick with what we've got. That means I have 12 laborers who are currently able to start gathering resources and placing them where they need to go. So now we've cleared this area out. We are going to deliver a total of 18 logs, and our four builders are going to get to work in constructing this. Now, one thing I actually like about this game a lot is it's got a very different type of aesthetic to it, right? I mean, I've played a lot of Colony Sims on the channel. I've seen a lot of them inspired by, you know, things like Banished. I mean, again, I hold that up as kind of the gold standard, as getting the genre really going up and running. But, you know, you'll see things like Settlement Survivor and stuff, and they end up having kind of similar aesthetics. These guys go for what is definitely feels more like a Western Frontier pioneering style. The sort of stuff that I might find if I go to, let's say, um, Colonial uh, Williamsburg or maybe... Uh, Go to a, uh, the Frontier Museum in my state of Virginia, and you can find some buildings that are going to be kind of like this. I just think that's kind of cool. Anyway, we want to place down some shelters. Now, desirability does matter. 
And you hit tab, by the way, to rotate these buildings. These are little things that's not always obvious, but there you go. Um, desirability for these buildings is going to matter. We are going to be able to improve that to some degree with certain amenities, like a marketplace. But of course, placing down any manual labor area, any workshop next to the housing is not going to be great for you. So ideally, you want to set your housing up a little bit further away from where you expect you're going to be having any workshops. A bit of uh, urban planning is kind of necessary. Now, we're going to need, I think, a total of six houses, maybe eventually eight. For now, let's just build in little clusters of, like, four and see if this works out all right for me. I'm going to be placing... You know what? Let's place another one over here. I think I might end up leaving some space for, like, a marketplace over here. That's a lot of housing to work on right off the bat, but we need a fair bit of it. Actually, you know what? Just, just in order to speed things up, let's cancel this for now. We'll come back to it. All right, now I want to start clearing out some resources. Here's the clear button right down here, and this is where you're going to start chopping down anything that's in your way. By default, it clears out kind of everything. And we don't want that. I don't want to, for example, knock down bushes. And or, uh, I kind of want to be able to get some food from those. So right now, I'm going to turn off everything except for trees and stone. That's one area where I feel like this isn't the most useful tool. You kind of have to be, like, watching for it, but it's fine. Let's go ahead and select all of this. At least it gives you an opportunity to say, is this everything you want to knock down? And the answer is yes. Let's go ahead and mark those for clearing. Our laborers will be able to start chopping that stuff down and getting ourselves a little bit of extra lumber. There are other things that we will be able to do. For example, simply harvesting resources is also an option. Instead of clearing, we will probably need to do that. We can place down walls. That's something we don't need at the beginning of the game, but eventually it's going to be very important we have some defenses. And we can also flatten out some terrain to make it a little bit easier to place down buildings and place down dirt roads. Obviously, I want to have some dirt roads that kind of go like this. Now, one thing I love about the roads, notice this. You can get a kind of a lot of uh, variation in the appearance of it based on where you start and where you want it to go. You can make things a nice tight grid pattern like if you want to, but just aesthetically, I like that I can have kind of a snaking winding road over here, you know? It just feels, it feels like it shakes up the grid just a little bit more. Now, the game is giving me a couple of warnings up here in the top left. As, whoa, that was a lightning strike, like, right freaking there. Holy crap. Anyway, it is giving me some warnings as to things we need. You don't have enough housing. You don't have enough firewood. Yeah, understood. Thank you. Duly noted, we will fix that as fast as we can. Let's go back to the building menu. There are other things we are going to need. Food production comes to mind, and there are a few different options for us. We have hunter cabins, where people will venture out to track down some game. We have forager shacks, where we can gather up, you know, things like uh, berries and whatnot. And that's actually what a lot of these little symbols represent over here. We have medicinal roots, patches of herbs... Willow bushes, those aren't food, those are all other things. Uh, gold ore, wow, hello. Bird's nests, if we want to get ourselves some stuff. And then these grayed out options are ones that are not um, mature yet in this season, but eventually could turn into something like a hazelnut bush. We can get ourselves a little bit of extra food that way. There's a few of them. You will need to micromanage your foragers a little bit and change their work zones just a little in order to make things more efficient at some point. I also wouldn't mind getting some of the fish up and running. We did kind of talk about how that could be pretty useful. I sort of stand by that. So I'm thinking maybe we place like a little shed over here. Sure, that seems fine. And we can move the work shed or uh, the work area around a little bit to try and find a slightly more efficient area for harvesting some fish. But that's going to be important for us. Food is actually a little bit hard to come by at the very beginning of the game. But uh, once you get your farming up and running, which does take a while, admittedly, uh, it gets a lot easier over time. Let's see. I do think we need to place down a forager's shack. And the question is, where do I place it? Do I just sort of stick close to town for now? I guess I could. One thing we should think through is where we're going to be placing stuff like our storage and our processing buildings. So, for example, food is able to spoil in this game. Overharvesting fish is great for your short-term needs, but it will spoil and then you're going to find you don't have any food after all. This is where the smokehouse comes into play. And for both fish and for um, meat, you'll be able to smoke that into something that's much longer lasting. So normally what you'd want to do is place down a smokehouse, again, farther away from the houses. You can see the kind of the red desirability around it. But place it close-ish to where people are going to be harvesting fish and close to where people are going to be turning in their hunting kills. So we kind of want to have something over in this direction, and I think we'll go ahead and place a smokehouse over here, though I don't necessarily need people to work on it right now. But we will come back to that in a little bit. I don't even think there's a pause option. Is there? Uh, no, construction enabled. Perfect. We'll go ahead and turn these off. Focus on houses first. Excellent. Okay, I learned something already. So we'll do some of that. Uh, under storage, we have a root cellar somewhere. Let's see. 
Stockyard, root cellar. Yeah, first you need to build an actual stockyard, and that's going to unlock the technology to build either a storehouse to store all sorts of items, or a root cellar to store a lot of food items in a colder temperature area. And this is something you'd want to place, you know, between, let's say, your housing and uh, all your gathering huts, so that you're able to better store all the food and there's less travel time involved. All of that would be very good for you. But I think the first thing I want to do before I get anything else besides houses is I'm going to want to get some uh, firewood up and running. Is it f resources? I think it's under resources. Yeah, and we also need a well. Okay, so let's get a firewood splitter. And I'm going to place this over, let's say, uh, let's say over here is fine for now. Again, kind of further away from some housing, but I think this is going to be mostly a residential district. So we'll do that. And then I also want to be placing down a basic well. And this thing is where people are going to be getting some water. Surprise, surprise. Uh, which is important in order to keep people happy. Uh, also, I think it's needed for a lot of other stuff, but I honestly don't remember off the cuff what it's for. I just know you need these, otherwise you'll be in trouble. Now, one thing to keep in mind with a lot of the wild lands out over here, there can be predators wandering around. I'm talking wolves or bears. And they can and will absolutely kill your people if they go wandering off very far. So that is a major risk for your hunters. It is totally possible for them to suddenly get uh, ganged up on and ganked by a wolf. Not fun. You're not going to like that. So keep an eye out for it. Don't be uh, afraid to retreat your people if you need to. That's kind of just an early game threat. At some point, of course, you are going to have to worry about raiders and stuff later. But for now, for now, things should be minorly peaceful. All right, so we've got some housing going together. That's not so bad. Let's take a look up over here. And we can see that we have 12 villagers... And uh, they are currently uh, laying up in three houses. Each one can house four people. So we have all the housing I technically need right this second. I just know at some point in the near future, we're going to be asked to have more. There we go. More people wish to join the settlement. If we want to get some extra free bodies, we need a four-month food supply and six houses. And that's where I'm saying we want to get ourselves up to six. We'll come back to that in a little bit. Let's focus on the basics. Chop down some trees. Get a well up and a running. Get yourself a firewood splitter build site. Okay, so people are looking for some clean water sources. Yeah, they do need that. That's just like an actual physical need. So when I said that they don't drink water, I think that, you know, what I was really saying there is uh, basically they need to have a well. You don't have to be next to a lake in order to have a water source. Just a well should be all you need. Impending heat wave. I don't think I was expecting that. Okay, well, we really need to be getting ourselves a water supply up and running if we're going to do that. I think you can increase the number of workers here, and then you can prioritize a building. So, for example, I could say, really work on this uh, well site. But right now, I actually don't have enough stone, so I'm having people go over here and harvest up some of these rocks. There is our firewood splitter. Okay, so that's taken care of. Now, fun fact, when you build a ha uh, building like this, it will automatically assign someone, if you have any spare laborers, to that profession. So we've already got ourselves a firewood splitter. I don't need to take care of this myself. But if I wanted to pull the person off or assign someone else there, we could do so. One thing that's interesting to me is a lot of the early game buildings actually only have space for one, maybe sometimes two jobs. We could have a second one over here, but I feel like one is probably all we need. Katya will do just fine. But yeah, not an absolute ton of jobs in some of these buildings, at least until some of the mid to late game options come available. So for now, we'll just ignore all that. I would like to continue getting some dirt roads over here just because I like that curvature. Look at that. Look at the curvature that just occurred over there. Did that need to happen? No. Does it look cooler than it did? abso freaking lootly Hey, are you okay? What's, what, what, what's, what's that symbol over your head? You're sick. Oh, great. Stricken with dehydration because of the heat wave. Yeah, can you guys really freaking prioritize some of this? Hold up. We're going to prioritize some stone over all the lumber. And we're going to get this dang well built up, please and thank you. Because for some reason, they're working on everything other than what I want them to do. No, like, for real, though. You guys are not prioritizing. Harvest this resource, please. Harvest the rocks. We got sick people. Now, we will be able to do something about that later. Right, we'll be able to uh, get, you know, some sort of hospital or apothecary or something like that. But for now, the best I can do is try to get my water supplies up and running. I was not expecting to have to deal with uh, stuff like a heat wave this early on in the game. I mean, I'm not unhappy about it, but that that was unexpected. The last time I played this in kind of my early test game, I lost two people to Predators within the first, like, five minutes of playing. So the game can be brutal uh, on occasion. It can definitely be brutal. Anyway, now we have all the resources. I just need someone to dig out a quick well. And now we're going to have a water source, and people should be able to take care of themselves. So we're going to be A-OK -okay now. Now up over here, I want to point attention to some of the other factors here. We have two people who are currently sick from dehydration. That'll get fixed once they get a good drink, so I think we'll be all right. 
You can see the age brackets, adults and adolescents are uh, members of your community. Then we have the happiness, and it gives you some idea where people might be falling behind, whether that's in food or in health or whatever else. Right now, everyone seems to be doing A-OK. -okay. Then you got your food stores, and there's a lot of different foods you can see over here. We managed to grab a handful of different vegetables. We started off with some smoked meat, so nothing's gonna spoil quite yet. But you can see that we have only two months before a lot of this food is gonna start spoiling off. A total of five months are in public stores, but in two months, a lot is gonna go away. So keep an eye on this. It gives you an idea as to one, how much food you might be overproducing and what you want to refine into something that's gonna last a bit longer. But also, it gives you a pretty good idea, like, just whether you're going to survive in the near future and whether you're keeping up with your food needs. Higher the population, obviously, the more needs you're going to have. So let's start taking a look at things like some storage. I do need to get myself a stockyard. That's always going to be important. Uh, we will place it over probably... We'll probably place it over in this direction for the time being. Let's go ahead and rotate this around. Um, I want it to be kind of close to the firewood, so I don't think it really matters what the orientation is. This should be all right. Let's go ahead and knock this all out. We'll have a storage yard. Then I'll start placing down some gathering huts and figure out what I want to do with my root cellar. Because again, that's all very, very important. I want it to be in a place to uh, pick up the smoked meat and also a lot of the harvested random wild goods. So I'm planning out a bit more of my town, and I think this is going to end up being a larger food processing area, just out of range of a lot of the houses I plan on setting up. So let's finish up this sixth house over here, just so I get some free workers, which will make my life a little bit faster once I get some more food. And then let's go ahead and start working on this stockyard site over here, just so we can unlock things like the root cellar. I think that should be helpful for us. For some reason, the laborers still think that at least clearing out the build sites is the top priority. I guess I'm not upset about that as long as you guys do continue to build up this stockyard on demand. I really want to get this thing set up. Please and thank you. There we go. Just like that, now we have a stockyard. and We can start dropping off a lot of our excess resources, including the firewood, so that the firewood splitter can stay at their job as long as possible. Now we're going to go back to storage over here, and I'm going to place down a root cellar. Uh, root cellar, do, 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 where do I want to place it? Maybe right along over here, actually. Very close to where the hunters and stuff are going to be. Still pretty close to a lot of our housing. I think that's not a horrible idea, so let's plan on that. Uh, I will open up, let's say, the forger shack for construction and maybe also fish. Remember, if we can get enough food together, that's when the people are going to join, since we have an excess of housing right now. Okay, so here's our fishing shack. Uh, there are no fish in range, apparently. That's interesting, because there were before. Uh, let's see. I'm looking for a really good fishing productivity area, ideally nearby. 130% appears to be kind of the best I can get. There's a good amount of fish over this direction. There's kind of this little shoal of fish thing here, which actually is going to give me a pretty nice buff to 240%. So I think we want to take advantage of that as close to our actual shack as possible. I think, yeah, people are going to get the stuff they need for fishing, and then they're just going to walk on over here, and they're going to catch all the fish and then drop it off at what is going to be my smokehouse. This kind of makes sense for me. For the forager shack, you can see now that certain things, like bird's nests, are no longer going to have eggs. Uh, but now Hawthorn is an option, and so are the hazelnut bushes. Let's go ahead and move this working area. And you can see uh, down over here, it gives you an idea of what kind of stuff you're going to be able to gather up. So over here, you kind of lose out on a few resources. Over here, you get a lot more. I guess I'll go ahead and pick this up right over here. It's got plenty to work with, honestly. That's not bad. I don't really care that much about herbs and medicines, but I'm not going to be unhappy to have it either. I mostly want to be gathering things like nuts. Okay, now that we apparently have an extra bit of food, some people want to join. I will accept them, absolutely. That's seven more villagers who have immigrated into the village. Perfect. We have enough housing to take care of all of them, so I don't have to worry about that. I do, however, have to worry about our lack of food. So let's go ahead and enable the hunter cabin. Now, hunting I found to be a little bit difficult. Um, it's not always easy to tell where the animals are going to be. It usually is in a somewhat wooded area, so I'm kind of hoping out over here we might find something. But I haven't really found a good marker on the map that says, you will definitely find a lot of deer in this particular spot. Might be blind on that, might just have a lot to learn. I don't know. More people want to join if we can build up a bustling market. Now, a market is nice because it's going to generate gold and helps us get immigration and increases desirability for a lot of these houses and helps drop off resources where they need to go. So if you go under amenities and services, what I want to do is get this market. But you can see we are unable to get it yet because first we need to get a saw pit. A saw pit 
is where we are going to turn some lumber into planks so we can get some more construction stuff up and running. So I do need to be getting one of those up. And then also a uh, storehouse. Uh, well, we have a stock yard, but we don't have a storehouse. So those are two more things that I kind of need to build before I'm gonna be able to get a market up and running. I should also note that there are a lot of other amenities and services you can set up to increase happiness or have other various different benefits, but they'll cost you gold to operate. And that's where you need to have a market so you can sell goods around to people and start passively generating income for all houses nearby, and eventually unlock things like trading posts, which are gonna get us even more gold generation. And in fact, something I've uh, found is that it's often worth buying uh, raw resources at trading posts and then converting them into processed goods and you can actually make a pretty good profit. So a specialist town that's focused on uh, manufacturing could actually be pretty good for you. But obviously at the beginning of the game, we wanna get a lot of the basics up and running. So we'll worry about that later. What's wrong with you and why are you injured? I don't know, health is not looking great. Probably because uh, did some hunting and got self-injured. Let's take a look at our working zone and see if we can find anything. So I do see there's this little symbol right here for I think trapping. Uh, doesn't really bode too well for me though. Um, I don't see anything that really gives us a lot to work with as far as finding animals. So hunting may not be a very good option for us. We'll try for something up here and see if we can catch like some small animals. I'm pretty sure that's what the trap represents. But I'm not really expecting we're gonna get a lot. Now as the seasons change, you can see this little thing up over here. We're now entering into early winter. And as a result, I just saw that a lot of these plants have turned themselves off. So there's really nothing to harvest over here anymore. And that's where you really want to have enough food to live through the winter. Uh, not great for us right now, though, because, well, we don't have a whole lot of food for the winter. Um, let's take a look at this hunter calving. The hunter has produced absolutely nothing in the last year. We have managed to produce 54 fish. That's not a ton. We did manage to get some herbs and some nuts, but not a lot there either. Yeah, we're gonna be struggling a little bit for some food at the very beginning of the game, which is appropriate. Should be a little bit difficult to get some food up and running. Might need to get some more fish just so we have an option to keep us going through the winter. We're barely going to get by as it is right now. Um, and I really need to get this smokehouse up and running. So yeah, maybe setting up a second one of those is a good idea. Sometimes it's worth setting up two or three of these forger shacks because you can only have one person work over there. And if we take a look at the professions, you can see right now I've got 11 laborers. Now, it's nice having a lot of laborers to gather up resources, but you know what's also nice is putting them to work to gather up other things that you know you're going to need, like food. Root cellar is finished, which means we'll be able to store a lot of our extra food, including some smoked meat, so that's going to be helpful. Let's go ahead and get ourselves some uh, roads set up. I need to set up something kind of like this, and I kind of want to have just like slightly inefficient looking roads just because I think I like the aesthetic of it. So we'll do something like this, and then maybe over here, and then I uh, can't quite get it where I wanted it. What if we do something like that? There we go. Can't see it super easily, but just like, you know, some little curvy roads and stuff. I don't know. I think it's cool. It, this is like a very small aesthetic thing, but it pleases me greatly. There you go. Kind of like this. I mean, does this look efficient? Does it look gritty? No. Nah. But does it look more organic? Yeah, and that's why I like it. All right, we survived the winter. We are now moving in. Well, I say we survived the winter. I mean, we're still very much in early spring, but we are moving on into year two, which means I'm going to go ahead and get myself a storehouse up and running so I can get that market. And a lot of these plants are once again becoming available. Still not very food related, but oh well. There are some greens up over here. I do like that. Um, there's actually really not much in the way of harvestable food out here at all. That's a little scary. Some greens over here, more hawthorn. We might need to move some gathering over here on occasion. We will uh, come back to some of that and see how we feel. But the fish is up and running, so we've got plenty of that going right now. That's at least going to be nice. So one thing we may want to do is start thinking about some farms. Now, farms, of course, are going to be a good source of some food, but they do take a lot of extra work. One, to set them up initially, and then two, because, uh, well, um, you'll see, there's such a thing as crop rotations in this game, and it does take a little bit of work to kind of figure out. Let us set up a simple little farm out over here. For now, I'll just do a very basic plot, uh, let's say, maybe a 5x6, 6x6. Sure, it does have two people working in it, and that might seem bad, but I think in this case it's going to be fine. I can always pull back. It takes a long time to prepare a farm. Not only do I have to clear all the obstructions, but then someone actually has to come through in here and till. And the number of farmers you have is going to be what determines how fast you can till up this farm. Uh, it takes a lot of effort. Look at this. 1,680 manual effort. That is not builders. 
only farmers. If I had made a smaller farm with only one person, it would have taken a lot longer. So that's kind of one of the reasons I want to go for two over here. Just make this a little bit faster. I think I am going to set up a second little forager shack over here as well. We're just nowhere near enough food production still. The hunter is doing absolutely nothing for us, which is kind of a huge problem. We're still not gathering the right kind of stuff. Some nuts, but like we're not even gathering the eggs. See, this is where, like, I don't, it, 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 I don't know if there's something we need to do in order to prioritize this. It says that a forager can get it. I'm not sure if it's true or not, but that's what they say, so maybe having a second forager is great. Alternatively, it could be our forager is just for some reason prioritizing gathering all this stuff that I don't care about. And maybe that's one example where it's better to go ahead and move this over somewhere else where there are less resources to gather in order to force them to gather the stuff you know you want. That may very well be the case, so let's try for that and see if we can get ourselves a handful of bird eggs before spring is over and they all fly away. One thing that's nice about the game is it does give you a warning when some buildings are not being productive. For example, the hunter's cabinet says, they haven't found any game for a while. It's like, yeah, no kidding. So maybe try moving it? Yeah, and I think that's the right idea. Um, I'm looking for, oh wait, there's some deer. Hold up, okay, perfect. Let's set up over in this direction, try to direct them over here. I still don't know what's behind the fog of war, but apparently deer are included in that. So now our hunter might actually be able to go do something. Please, for the love of God, get to it. In the meantime, you can see we are smoking up a fair bit of fish. So I'm starting to build up a little bit of a food stockpile. It's not much, but we're getting a little bit. It's going to get a lot easier once we have farms. But again, farms are a big investment in this game. So don't, don't think you can just jump into this and it magically solves all your problems. Oh, great, more heat waves. That's what I like to see. Um, maybe we want to set up like an additional well or something. I think we probably do. Maybe down over here. Yeah, this is actually a pretty good location for it. Just make sure that there's plenty of water production to go around, since heat waves are going to be a little bit unpleasant. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Okay, I missed this for a second. There was, in fact, a predator sighted over here, and somebody is horribly, horribly injured. Hopefully, you aren't going to die from this, because there's not a whole lot that I can do. But yeah, this uh, person was forging some eggs. Matrada was forging eggs and got attacked by... What is this? Was it a, a carcass of a hunted animal? Well, I don't know what it was, but I'm guessing it was a wolf or maybe a bear or something. Yeah, you're in pain and not very happy. I can't say that I blame you. There is a very strong chance you are going to die of injuries and illnesses. Uh, it can happen. But yeah, that's what you gotta watch for. There are occasionally going to be predators. One other thing I haven't talked about is a storage cart. Now, this is a unit that we actually have. It's a mobile little storage thing we can use. Place it down over, I don't know, like let's say up over here or something. Um, we obviously would prefer to have some larger static store yards, but sometimes when you need to move these into a work area to kind of keep them more efficient, like over here so people don't have to walk as far to drop off some greens, I'm going to call that a victory. So I'm going to go ahead and move this little cart around. Isn't this kind of cool? Sort of satisfying? I like it. And again, I really like the aesthetic behind this game. Food production starting to look a little bit better, by the way. We can see down here in the forager shacks that we have been harvesting the eggs and stuff. They were absolutely getting distracted with food that I don't necessarily want. Blueberry bushes are now in season though, so I think I am gonna move this over, and yeah, it means we're gonna gather up some medicines and stuff, but let's go ahead and gather from those blueberry bushes since the birds' nests are gone. And I think some people might be a little bit annoyed by the micromanagement, but I kinda like that you have to watch for things that are in season. You know, pay attention and kinda figure out where you wanna be gathering rather than just one big set it and forget it kind of thing you would do in a game like Banished. Oh, and what's this? Deer have been sighted. Lots of them. Excellent. Okay, let's go ahead and move this over here so that they can work. Again, hoping we're not going to find any predators. But yeah, lots of deer sighted in this one area. Excellent. That's a great opportunity to get a lot more food. I also like that when you click on a building, you see the overlapping work zones. So clicking on this one, I can see that all this is covered, including a whole bunch of Hawthorne over here. But I can also see the one I don't have selected to know exactly where they're working. That's pretty darn nice for me. I really like these little tweaks. Uh, these are tiny little quality of life things that, to me, make a big difference in making a game more accessible. Again, the game is struggling in the sense that it doesn't really have any sort of a tutorial behind it. But the little bits of stuff that I am seeing, even in this early access, you can just kind of see, this stuff seems really promising to me. The developers are thinking in the right direction for a pretty fun Frontier style of game. Oh, we had someone born. Excellent. And two new villagers have immigrated into the base. We're going to be running out of housing pretty soon, but I will fix that probably in the next video. I think we're going to go ahead and end things along over here, if and you guys don't mind. 
Uh, we'll do something like this, just kind of get everything connected. Um, what I plan on doing in the next video is setting up this farm, and I will show you guys how the crop rotation is going to work. We're going to try to upgrade our city center so that we will be able to access a whole new round of technology and see if we can get the population in our food stores up enough that I can look for some more production chains. So I hope you guys are looking forward to this series. I'm not sure how long of a series it's going to go. It really depends a lot on the support you guys show, which is usually always extremely generous, but I would appreciate you guys hitting that like button to let me know. And of course, I don't know how far this early access is really available to go at this point. There may be a lot of features missing. We'll find out as we continue. Be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe to the notify bell, and I will see you guys next time.